Another method of measuring concentrations is in parts per million. And this is very similar to percent concentration in that percent was literally parts per hundred. And now we're talking about parts per million. So this is typically used when concentrations of something are very small. For example, maybe measurements of toxins in the environment or harmful chemicals in a lake or something like that. So this works in all different kinds of units. And we can literally say that if you pick some unit, then you want to have a certain number of that unit divided by a million of that same unit. And then you literally have parts per million. So how many grams per million grams, or how many mils per million mils. But because of our metric system, we can simplify this a little bit. So let's just suppose for a minute we chose our unit to be mass. And so we were measuring something in milligrams. So milligrams per million milligrams would be parts per million. But another name for a million milligrams is just a kilogram. So milligrams per kilogram, or as a matter of fact, a milli something per a kilo, kilo something, anything, really works as parts per million. Now let's suppose that we tried a mass per volume, just like we could also do with percent. So we could again measure the mass in milligrams, and we need to divide it by a thousand of the same size units, but in volume. Now we know that a milligram can be converted into a volume if you consider the mass of water. Let's actually think about it in terms of a kilogram. We know that if, if the bottom was a mass, then kilograms would belong here. Now, when we're talking about water, one kilogram is equal to one liter. So that means we can just replace our kilograms with liters, and milligrams per liter also works as parts per million. So let's look at a couple of examples of how you actually answer questions about this. Example one says, a certain pesticide has a toxic solubility of five grams for every one kilogram of body weight. What is the solubility in parts per million? So all we're really doing is we're taking five grams per kilogram and turning it into parts per million. And just to be clear here, we are still working with our general formula that concentration is equal to the amount of solute divided in the total amount of solution. In this case, we have five grams dissolved in a total of one kilogram of your body. And let me just mention that that one kilogram, we're going to assume that that's an exact number, or maybe we should better off make it 1.0 kilograms so we don't get confused with significant digits. And so the simple way to think about this question is going to be asking ourselves, how can we convert this into units of milligrams per kilogram? Well, we already have 1.0 kilograms on the bottom, so let's just convert 5 grams into milligrams. Well, 5 grams is equal to 5,000 milligrams. So now we can say that this is equal to 5,000 parts per million. And if we want to be picky about significant digits here, we could say 5.0 times 10 cubed parts per million if that number 1 was an exact number, or we could say just 5 times 10 cubed. But the big idea here is, uh, is converting it into those units of milligrams per kilogram. So let's look at a second example involving parts per million. Suppose 17 grams of sucrose is dissolved in 183 grams of water. What is the concentration of sucrose in parts per million? So again, we're dealing with the solute divided by this solution. In this case, sucrose is dissolved in water, so 17 grams of solute is dissolved in 183 grams of water. Now, a quick little note here, we've said before that volumes are not additive. In other words, if you dissolve 17 milliliters of a liquid in 183 milliliters of another liquid, you don't know what the total volume will be when you're done. However, mass is additive. We have a law called the conservation of mass, saying that if we put two masses together, the mass of the final product will be the same. So, or will be the sum of the two original masses, I should say. So for the bottom of our fraction here, we are looking for the total mass of solution. That is 183 plus 17, because both of those are being combined to make a total of 200 grams. 
So now again we want to convert this into parts per million. So if we would turn this into milligrams per kilogram, then we would end up with parts per million. So 17 milligrams is 17,000 milligrams and 200 grams is 0 0.200 kilograms. And now if we do that calculation, we find that the number of parts per million is 85,000. 85,000. Because again, if you turn it into milligrams per kilogram, or something per million something, you are automatically using parts per million. And let's report this as 8.5 times 10 to the fourth parts per million. And one more quick example for parts per million. Let's turn 38 parts per million into a percent weight by weight concentration. Well, we know that 38 parts per million can be written as 38 milligrams per 1 million milligrams or per kilogram if you want to think of it that way. And so turning this into a percent weight by weight is going to be setting it equal to something per hundred. So we could say for example grams per 100 grams would be a percent weight by weight. We could have chosen milligrams per 100 milligrams. It really doesn't matter. So let's think about getting one kilogram and converting that to 100 grams. Well one kilogram is a thousand grams so we would have to divide this number by 10 to get 100 grams. So now if we divide 38 by 10 we are going to get 3.8, but that still has units of milligrams. So now let's turn that into grams. That involves moving the decimal three more places and we get 0 0.0038. And so since we've now arrived at grams per 100 grams, we can report this as 0.0038% weight by weight. A quick alternate to this uh, problem we can also write 38 parts per million as 38 grams per million grams. And if we take the same unit on the top and the bottom and times it by 100%, we would be turning it into percent weight by weight. So 38 divided by a million and then timesing by 100, obviously you could have just divided by 1 times 10 to the fourth, but we're still going to get 0 0.0038. So we're going to get the same answer. So hopefully you see that parts per million is really in effect and not that much different than percent. And we can convert between the two as well.